Hi everybody, John Malonke here with United Patients Group. And today I have a special guest. We've worked together for probably about eight, nine years in the cannabis industry. Uh, his name is Dr. Alan Frankel, uh, founder and head of Greenbridge Medical out of Santa Monica, California. And not only is Dr. Frankel an expert in cannabis, but especially in background has been with internal medicine for 20 something years. And I would say 27, I think it's, it's a little higher, yeah. but I'll let Dr. Frankel tell you about, a little about, about his background. Uh, so welcome, Dr. Frankel. Thanks, John, it's always fun. Um, I love these um, Q and A's, whether it's the audience, whether it's you, and uh, what I would really love to do is for us to make this into an online radio show, you know, anything cannabis, just call with a seed question, with a sprouting question, a growing question, extracting question, dosing question, THCV, all the new cool stuff that's happening. But yes, I'm Alan Frankel at greenbridgemed.com, 310-393-0640. Um, and we're doing virtual telemedicine now, but we're having a great time with it because I think we all need something that's at least entertaining. So my visits, uh, Voltaire in 1732 stated the art of medicine consists in amusing patients while nature cures them. So that, huh? Yeah. And now I do it with telemedicine. Good. So let's talk about, well, we can talk about telemed as well, but let's talk about, you know, you have an impressive background. You're not just a pot doc, you know, I hate that term pot doc, but a lot of the doctors in California and across the country are, here's your recommendation, call me in a year, you know, if, if you need a renewal. And there's only a handful of doctors that truly know, especially about dosing. It's not a one size fits all. We'll get into that, but it's not a one size fits all. You look at age, weight, current health condition, the type of stage, uh, if it is cancer or other ailments that you're going through and any medications, just to name a few of, of what you as a doctor, you, what you as a physician look at with the patient. Um, and also we talked, we'll go into hope as well, but the will to live, do they want to live? Is this something that they want to get out of? Because a lot of doc, a lot of um, uh, conversation we had, a lot of these patients are just, oh, woe is me. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to uh, do anything about it. This is the end of my life. And unfortunately, you know, that's a lot of people go down the, the dark rabbit hole with that. But let's go back. Can you just share one? Well, let's talk about cannabis and cannabinoids, and most importantly, the endocannabinoid system. Can you share what the endocannabinoid system is and why it's important um, uh, for uh, everyone, mammals, human beings, vertebrae? Anybody with a vertebra. Yeah. So there's a lot of um, slimy fish that have endocannabinoid yeah. system. Well, I've, I've kind of changed how I do this explanation. Great. We're going to draw this into, we're going to exocannabinoids that are external to our body, external cannabinoids. It could be from a plant, could be from hemp, could be from a laboratory. And then endocannabinoids are cannabinoids that we make. So first let's talk about the endocannabinoid system. Um, the uh, cannabis, there's new studies with uh, carbon dating that cannabis is 23 million years old, 23 million years old. And this is one of the reasons that I've been changing more to acid molecules, which we'll be talking about. Man only had control of fiber, excuse me, fire um, 100,000 years ago. So from 23 million years ago up until 100,000 years ago, there was tons of cannabis around and early versions of cannabis, but they could not heat it. And if they're not able to heat it, they couldn't get THC, they couldn't get CBD, they would get THCA, CBDA, CBGA, THCVA, all the acid forms. So once that, a couple of years ago, um, we've actually never talked about it this way, that it, 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 this has been going on for 23 million years, being very, very premature vertebrates. So we have a system inside of us, just like we have a nervous system, we have a venous system, arterial system, um, we have an endocannabinoid system. And the term endo meaning internal cannabinoids because these molecules that we make, hundreds of them, um, and receptors that we have for these molecules, whether they're part of the endocannabinoid system or the exocannabinoid system, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, so the endocannabinoid system is 1.2 billion years old. 
So we're talking about a, a receptor and a set of plants that go back possibly two billion years, but anyway, one billion, but a very, very, very long time ago. And how anybody can be concerned that there's something harm, intrinsically harmful about cannabis. It's, I mean, you'd have to ask yourself, what's the last clinical trial that's been done to prove that tomatoes are safe? I don't think, I couldn't, I, I looked. There are no studies on tomatoes, none, not one. And there's a bunch of studies on cannabis. Um, so now let's go, that's the endocannabinoid system, which is always working on its own, but sometimes becomes a little deficient. And then we call it an endocannabinoid deficiency. And then we have to bring in, now I should have a big sign, the exocannabinoids. So the exocannabinoids are cannabinoids that are made outside of the, the body. Um, they include um, you know, molecules like CBD, THC, CBD acid, the raw form of CBD, THC acid, which is turning out to be an incredibly important molecule in oil, um, and a total of about 120 major cannabinoids, a couple hundred terpenes, which are the smell molecules, but they're not there for the smell, they're there because that smell actually does something. Like, have you ever wondered, I mean, if I ask people <laughs> what fruit that they've picked up and smelled in their life, by far it's a, a citrus fruit, and usually it's a lemon. And so the question is, why do we all smell lemons? Because limonene, which is a terpene in a lemon, hits our CB1 or cannabinoid 1 receptor, just like a tiny, tiny, tiny THC dose. So a tiny, tiny happiness. And that's why we have lemon cleaners. It's not a coincidence, just because it makes us happier. The lemon scents in the cars. Lemon, it's, I don't know anybody who doesn't like a lemon scent. Um, so th those are the, some of the exocannabinoids we're talking about so far, the cannabis ones. But there's also <clears throat> hemp-based you know, cannabinoids. Um, and there's also cannabinoids that are made in the laboratory. What they have in common, at least at this point in time, is that they don't have those hundreds of terpenes and flavonoids <clears throat> and plant waxes. They basically have a small amount of CBD, a tiny amount of THC, and tiny, tiny amounts of terpenes. I mean, nobody's gone up to a typical industrial hemp plant and say, that smells great. It, it just doesn't. So the, the CBD products that are out there everywhere, I mean, everywhere, are generally Chinese-based you know, hemp products that are um, it generally not what it says in the bottle, often have heavy metals, and it's just not very effective. Um, and I, to anybody who's watching this who's tried a C CBD product that they got at the local grocery store, it's not the same. Don't give up on CBD because single molecule doesn't help. So that's a, a, a general idea. Yeah, well, you know, you talk about all the, you know, the, the, the um, acid forms and non-acid forms, um, which I want to get into, which are called cannabinoids. There are about 120 cannabinoids. We've had this discussion. Some people say 180. Some people say more. Some people say less. And the reason because more are being introduced each and every day are discovered. I mean, just like THCV, no one knew what THCV was, you know, two years ago, three years ago. And it still isn't, it hasn't even really hit the market. I know that you're a big proponent of THCV getting out to market. But before we go into the different cannabinoids, can you share what a cannabinoid is? Because they each play a role. You know, the most important one that everyone hears about and has been hearing about for years is THC. And over the last, you know, this gold rush in the cannabis industry, CBD is the buzzword because you're, like you said, you hear it, you hear it and see it, grocery stores to your chiropractic office, dentists now carry it. And then even our local health food markets, you go in there and you'll see a a, a shelf across the street from your office is a high-end natural food store and you'll have 50 different CBD products behind a glass container. I'm like, how do you choose? I mean, really, how do you choose? Yeah, I want that one. And so can you talk about um, what are cannabinoids and how each plays a role? And uh, a lot of patients, I'm certain you get this as well, is, you know, Dr. Frankel, um, uh, I don't want to get high, so I want the, I want the medical part of the cannabis plant, not the recreational part, which is totally incorrect. And so, can you go into that? Uh, what is a cannabinoid? How they each play a role, and how important um, THC uh, plays a role in a lot of ailments that are out there. Certainly, cancer. And we'll get into cancer shortly. Let's talk about 
CBD, THC, and THCA, um, at least as an introduction. Um, CBD and THC, I mean, first of all, THCA, THC acid is just the form of THC before it's heated. So if you take some raw buds, you know, cannabis flowers, and you don't heat them, um, it's, all, it's virtually all THCA. Um, and we're doing a test now on some extracts that are, were in storage for a year and a half that we have the certificate of um, authenticity for, and that we, we, somebody came across a leader of it. So we're gonna send a couple CCs off for testing. That will show us how much actually decarboxylates over time. Because Ms. Shulam has been talking about this, that if you, how do you deal with acid molecules if it's a constantly changing? Well, I, I think it's probably more constant, but we'll, we'll know in a week, we'll know in a week. Um, I think it's probably more constantly changing where THCA on the vine, you know, ultimately gets picked, harvested, uh, dried, and then if it's smoked or baked, the THCA in the bud from the heat turns to THC, or it's, it's made into an extract. It could be either, C, you know, depending upon the plant, could be a CBD extract. It could be a THC extract. But when we say CBD extract and THC extract, I'm talking about CBD with hundreds of other molecules. And how many hundred? We don't know. And the reason we don't know, which is, this is, I just verified this a couple of weeks ago. There is, there is truly, at least according to Dr. Uh, Jeff Raber, who I think is respected by, by, by everybody, um, there is no lab in the United States other than at the University of Mississippi um, where we could take a tincture that you buy or a capsule, capsule like this, that has oil inside of it, and be able to test what the terpenes and the flavonoids and all those other molecules are. They can only test cannabinoids. And to me, this is gonna be a huge thing. I mean, I, I plan on doing the, being the troublemaker myself. I'm gonna go buy a bunch of products, you know, take the labels off, somebody names them and puts them one, two, three, ten, and then we'll send them to El Soleil in Mississippi and we'll see what the THCA is and THC. And we'll see what, what happens over a year and a half. Because if it, if Mishulam's right, that means if you're keeping an extract for a year and you're counting on THCA or CBDA, it may be converting in the bottle. So I'm very excited. I can't wait to get the test results back. My guess is it's going to be fine and that, I, and we'll know, this is what the study is about, that if you keep it in an oil form, it doesn't continually decarboxylate like it does in bud form. What, I'm going ahead of ourselves here because Crin and I, you know, we were always, when we were juicing uh, the plant, uh, which, you know, for our listeners is the, is the THCA that Dr. Frank was talking about. And so you, just like you can with wheatgrass, you know, you're juicing the wheatgrass and you take your wheatgrass shot. You can do that with the cannabis. That's actually what we're doing with the cannabis plant in most cases. I know, Alan, you, you talked about um, uh, cold press, et cetera. But th what I'm talking about here is you're getting the cannabis plant, the leaves. I know. I mean, we have patients growing. Um, if you go to, this is a good tip. Okay. We need a red star tip. Um, it, it's in Amsterdam. Um, another one, cbdcrew.com, um, you know, CBD crew, C-R-E-W. Um, I'm pretty sure it's Baba Shanti is the head of that. And um, I met some of these guys, you know, years ago. And I, I, I should have, I just couldn't, I lost connection with them. But they have an auto flower feminized seed where if you wanted to buy this, some of these seeds, anybody can grow this plant. And what the plant ends up, it ends up being a small plant easy to grow indoors if you're in an apartment. Um, we could do a, a whole show just on how to make your own stuff. And because, it, you know, it's so expensive. But if you could, if the cost for even like full um, cancer medication is maybe three seeds a month, you know, $15 and some dirt and some water, um, because the vast majority of people can't afford these cannabis products. So much to the dismay of the, dispensaries that um, I, I work with, I'm, I'm giving out this information. I mean, because 
even if everybody were rich enough to be able to afford this month after month after month, um, a lot of people can't. And this is going to be a way people can start making this stuff at home. It will be pressing, decarboxylating, everything. Well, I think everybody with what's going on here in the world, I think a lot of people are are feeling more comfortable to stay <laughs> stay at home nowadays too. Um, well, stay you know, at home. Just stay safe and grow. Stay safe, safe and grow. Why not, huh? Um, you know, I think that's that's what our goal was: is to, to just to be self sufficient on our land, grow grow our fruits and vegetables, grow our cannabis, and and live a happy, healthy life. Um, that, that, that's, that's, that's a, that's a, like we're, we're putting our seeds in the ground this week. Yeah. Or we can go around town like Johnny Appleseed did, you know, and started planting cannabis seeds around, around the country. Um, let's go back to cannabis, to cannabinoids before, because I think it's a major part of, of the chain link of leading on to treating ailments and how you, what you do with your patients and why you choose different certain cannabinoids for, uh, certain, certain patients and certain ailments. So, can you give us a, like a cliff note version of what a cannabinoid is? I know you mentioned cannabinoids, but what, what they are and um, how each of those plays a role. You know, uh, THC with cancer, CBD with stopping the spread, um, THC, THCA with inflammation. And can you, can you talk, go into a little deeper into that? Well, it turns out that all the, first of all, the plant has become very, very distorted over the last 50 years, 60 years, mm -hmm. 70 years because people in the 50s and 60s, like people like me, um, we were looking for a certain effect. And if our guy, um, his name always ended up being Jerry, I don't know, would bring by some 19th, it was kind of legal then, it was before Nixon, so no, it wasn't a big deal. Um, and the truth is I really didn't smoke back then until I was 49, because I, I want to be honest about that, but pretend that I did. So if I went and called Jerry and he came by and he handed me a sample and I lit it and I didn't get stoned, um, I didn't know that it could do anything else, right? None of us knew that it could do anything else. Maybe Meshulam knew. Um, so we, I would reject it. And then he gave me something that I really liked. It had more THC in it. So the higher THC strains got rewarded by them being sold more. So they got grown more. And over years, since you can go through a, a, a generation in cannabis in five, six months, over five years, you can have you know, very, very different plants. So the plants went from being one and a half percent THC to being now, I just saw one the other day, 27% THC, and I've seen 30%. Um, I mean, that's potentially dangerous. I mean, that, that, that level of concentration, if somebody doesn't know what they're doing, you're gonna, you could end up in the ER, not because you're sick, but because you're, you feel you're going to die. Um, so the cannabinoid THC, these are, I wish I had a, I should get a. Sorry, well, in your office, you normally have the chart in the wall and you can point here. Look at. Look yes. At yeah. I, I can make that as a background. Yeah. There you are. And my face will be going like this. Yeah. So the cannabinoids used to be um, one to one to one to one. Everything was small amounts and about the same. And the four major cannabinoids, as it turns out, CBD, THC, THCA, and CBDA, um, and this is what our cancer regimen is because all those molecules have been shown to treat pain, to treat poor appetite, to increase, uh, to decrease nausea, and kill cancer cells. And the acid molecules, there is more and more and more information on the anti-cancer effects and also the, the neurological benefits of these acid molecules. And when you think about it, this was the type of molecules that man was using for, or pre-man for millions of years. So I mean, when I, or for a number of years, I kind of discounted the acid molecules because there was no evidence, but there was no data on them because it's very difficult to make THCA in the lab, it's unstable. But that's what Mishulam says which I'm sure is true, but I don't, we'll have, we have to find out how unstable it is. And I can't believe none, nobody's done this. I can't believe I haven't done this test. So we'll, we'll know in a week. Well, that, that, that's something that Corinne and I were looking to do is juicing. And that's what I was getting at. And I, and I, and I lost train of thought there is juicing. And, you know, anybody who wants to start a business out there, I think juicing and see how long the juice is bioavailable in, you know, and in in you go to your health food store, you're getting your juices. Sometimes they're up there probably for a week and you're, we're still buying them. 
you know, how long will the THCA acid in that fresh squeezed juice um, be fresh enough where you still have the benefits of that? And so I think, you know, uh, maybe you and Jeff can, can try that while you're out sampling uh, or testing these products to see how long after two days, five days, seven days, does it still stay, stay as potent as it, as it should be? Um, you know, I, I love that you, you're someone who knows cannabis. You know what? I didn't get it. I didn't, we'll, we'll get into this later, but I didn't really get your introduction of, as to why you, um, how you became a cannabis expert, you know, being a UC, UCLA medical grad, um, you know, and then you, you kind of fell into this, in this industry, just like Chris and I fell into this industry. Um, can you, I want our listeners to know, you know, that, that you are the real deal. And so can you just, just give like in a cliff note version of, you know, how, when you became a medical doctor and then an internist, but also into the cannabis industry, you were kind of uh, uh, adopted into this or, or dragged in just like Corinne and I were, 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 were dragged yeah. in. Um, well, in um, 1999, I was 49 and I had uh, a viral infection in my chest. It just wasn't getting better and I was short of breath. Went to my physician, he sent me to a cardiologist. I was in congestive heart failure and they gave me six months to live if I didn't get a heart transplant. So that was 21 years ago. And um, I, I chose not to have a transplant because I just didn't, I didn't want to do it. So some, I was living in the Topanga area, which for those of you who don't know, is quite rich in cannabis. So if you have friends in Topanga, you have access to cannabis, which I never used before, but I got, when my friends heard I was sick, they brought over tons of different stuff. I don't, we don't know what it was, but I'm sure it was all this high THC stuff. Um, and I liked it, it made me feel more comfortable. I was less depressed, but in five weeks, um, without even thinking about it, I ran up my flight of stairs, which I hadn't done in months. And then I was like, whoa. And anyway, my heart was healed. And if you look up now THC and congestive heart failure, there are a bunch of studies on THC benefiting congestive heart failure. So it's quite possible it was the cannabis that saved my life. But regardless, um, the, my changing d didn't depend upon that. It intrigued me. Then I started reading, and I started reading a lot, and that's what hooked me. And when people say there's no data, and this was 20 one years ago. I mean, then there was a lot less data now. I mean, there's a lot of data. I mean, you look at when people think, oh, there's no future in cannabis. Well, why are all, I mean, I don't know of any university that I've had any contact with that's not working on cannabis. Israel just spent a half a, I think a half a billion dollars just on cannabis and cancer. I mean, you don't have this happening at every university if it's nothing. I mean, the pharmaceutical companies are going to look at this and it's not going to be, I don't think, CBD, THC stuff that they come out with. They're going to come up with molecules that interact directly with their endocannabinoid system so they can patent them. They scare me to death. They scare me to death. We have these plants that work great. In, in my, I mean, I don't do anything any longer, not much anyway, in my kitchen sink, but I could. I could grow um, a CBD plant in my backyard, extract it myself, dilute it, and even without testing, I've done it so many times, I could make up a 20 mg per ml um, CBD solution that would be so much better than Epidiolex. And, and, and now, of course, we're using labs and lab people, but it's, um, it's not that complicated. It's just a, it's just a vegetable. Well, you, you say that the, the, you know the pharmaceutical companies will be they're they're already here and they're already doing it so you know yeah. we already see that that it is a that it, it is something that uh, is is staying around and has been around as even you mentioned 23 million years ago and that was the first description I've heard you talk about of why they didn't smoke it because they hadn't discovered fire yet yeah. <laughs> that makes sense now huh? I have another story similar to that. You know how everybody talks about everything happening 6,000 years ago. It's like yeah. cannabis 6,000, the, the, the Bible, uh, you know, Dead Sea Scrolls. So the reason everything was 6,000 years ago is that's when man learned how to write. <laughs> Before that, they couldn't document it. I mean, they were smoking for those 94,000 years. I mean, they were smoking and it was definitely a male dominant society. Um, 
I, I don't want to make any comments on that, but there were benefits of being Neanderthals. <laughs> I think people have, well, I wonder, do the Neanderthals have guilt? Do they have guilt? Do they have guilt feelings or hope? Well, I don't feelings? know. They probably, didn't, they probably didn't know how to write it down to express it with their therapist of what was going yeah. on. <laughs> so let's, do, let's just try this. So, um, Let's, let's talk about, you talk about cancer a minute ago with the four cannabinoids. Uh, cancer has affected both of us in different ways. Um, my beautiful wife, Corinne, uh, was diagnosed with stage four pancreatic cancer, and um, she passed in the end of 2017. We're in the industry. We live a healthy life. We know the knowledge of the cannabis plant. We know the knowledge, we have the knowledge of health and staying healthy and what we need to do to keep this health. Why did it affect Corinne? And why didn't it work on Corinne? Because it's worked on numerous other uh, 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 people we've worked with, how we were kind of adopted to this industry. My father-in-law had stage four lung cancer metastasized to his brain. He's still alive. That was 2011. Um, and now you, a cannabis expert, a man who knows health, he's, he's a physician, knows about health, what it means to keep stay on top of his health. And you get prostate cancer. and you've had a scary year. And, and when I share with, with others about a unhealthy PSA number is double digits. Can you continue on to that story? What your PSA numbers were? Yeah. So last year I, I didn't feel well. And it's, it's unbelievable that actually I didn't die from this because yeah, I may be a doctor and I might know in theory, what the right thing to do for myself is, but I'm a terrible, horrible patient. I'm a really good doctor, really, really terrible patient. So I, I had a, in the back of my mind, I had an idea something was going on because, I mean, I could barely walk. I mean, I was pale. It's, it was unbelievable level of denial. Um, and I got diagnosed at the end of, no, just November, end of November um, with stage four prostate cancer. It was, I was wondering why I was having pain while throwing a football with my sons. And it was because I had a metastasis in my shoulder, which, which that one freaked me out. It was like right here, like, oh, that's cancer. But it was like all over. And um, the treatment that I've used is hormonal blockers and cannabis. Um, I just saw, I had a follow-up last week and my regular doctors at home. So I saw one of his partners whom I've known for a long time. And the lab came back a few days ago. And so she was looking at it and scratching her head and looking at me and looking at other lab then printing out stuff. And, and she finally said, what else are you doing? We've never seen this. And I said, um, cannabis. Um, and she said, what type of cannabis? And I, so I told her um, that we, we like to use four different oils combined together because we're not smart enough to know if one of them is the best. And I don't think, in, I would love to talk to somebody that knows exactly which molecule to use for which cancer, because I'd love to see that data. I, I don't believe anybody knows. I mean, Israel doesn't know, and I, I mean, I've been doing this a long time. We don't know. So, so what, what works? What works for you? What worked for Corinne's father, having the same exact ailment, may not work for the next person. That's why we include all four of the major cannabinoids. They've all been proven to have solid anti-cancer properties. And the acid molecules, THCA and CBDA, are much, much, much better anti-nausea uh, molecules than either THC or CBD. So the acid molecules are really important. And again, what's cool about them is it, you, you can grow this stuff and eat it, just like John says, um, right? Often, instead of the leaves, uh, because I'm spoiled, I would use the buds, crush them up with my hand, and I tell pa patients to put it in a little whole fat yogurt and just ha have a tablespoon of it. Because having half a gram a day of raw, I mean, if people are making, can grow from cbdcrew.com, um, these little auto flowers that are one-to-one, -one, you could eat the bud or mix it up and that would give you the CBDA and THCA. And then you could put it in a vaporizer and vape it to get the active molecules or take it to the next step and extract it. But I think vaping very small amounts of, per day makes a lot of sense. I mean, the absorption rate is like 95% as opposed to like 25%. So 
So the question is, do we reduce the dose a little bit? So we're, we're scratching our heads on that one, but it's a very, that's the way for the majority of people to treat cancer is to grow um, uh, these one-to-one -one plants from CBD crew um, and then eat half of them raw and vape the rest. You know, I don't want to give anybody <clears throat> excuse me, false hope. And you and I always talk about hope. But I want you, you to share your PSA numbers now, what they were and what oh, they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when I get to the hospital, I mean, I don't, I don't remember the first two days of the hospital at all. Not, but my PSA was 6,000. Um, nobody had ever seen one of 6,000. So they ran it again. And it was 6,500. Things was growing. <laughs> so... <laughs> But now it's 0 0.5, 0 0.6, um, and I'm in remission. And I, I, for sure my bones have healed because I took a really bad bike fall a few weeks ago. And as I was going down, it was an oil slick thing. Um, I was thinking, oh God, my hip, nothing, nothing. Good, good. So, <clears throat> you know, when many patients, and you being a, an awful patient, as you mentioned, you know, when they hear those words, you have cancer. I mean, your whole world crashes. How can this happen to me? I mean, when Corinne and I received the, the, the diagnosis, it was June 29th. We were in our office planning my 50th birthday, planning our wedding anniversary. We had a three-week trip all planned. And to get that, our doctor calls, who was also our friend, to give her those words, it's like, wow. Okay, what do we do? And a lot of, you know, because we have a lot of this at our fingertips, we were able to go um, you know, the cannabis route, the natural route, the um, uh, integrative oncology route. I and mean, we did everything. We consulted with doctors. When I say all over the world, Australia, New Zealand, Italy, UK, Mexico, US. Um, you know, but a lot of the patients that we work with, and I'm certain with you, they always say, I'm going to try the conventional route first. And then if that doesn't work, I'm going to use cannabis. And so can you talk about that it's okay, you know, we're never telling anybody not to go the conventional route or not to do this. Two months ago, I wrote, a, I wrote a blog post just on this topic. And I think- I'll, I'll post it on, on the site, but uh, go on, mate. But let I'd people- have, I'd love to have a corner on your site. To, like, for, What's that, sorry? I'd love to have a corner somewhere, cool. like anything cannabis corner. Okay. Dr. Alan Frankel. It's, um, that'd be fine. But, but no, talk, talk about the, the, that it is okay to combine and why it is okay to combine. The reason that, and I have a, one of my blogs is specifically, it's good to use cannabis even if chemo is curing you. Um, the cannabis, well, one, anxiety, which everybody has. And now, of course, with COVID, everybody has more. Um, pain issues, sleep issues. Um, nausea issues, appetite issues. Um, these are all issues that people with cancer have, and they certainly all have it when they're going through chemo and to some extent radiation. So I tell the patients when we start them on the combination oil, which is 10 milligrams of each CBD. And th this is, I'm not, I can't give this a medical recommendation. I'm telling you what I'm personally taking. So I, I think that's the way, what do you think, John? That this, this whole thing is tricky about telling doses. I can't, this is yeah, not so, a medical recommendation. This is what I'm personally doing. All right. Um, well, just, let, let's just throw that disclaimer here. You know, this is not to replace a one-on-one -on -one with your physician. If you want a one-on-one -on -one physician, Dr. Frankel, is, as I mentioned, um, uh, is located in, in uh, Santa Monica, California. Uh, he does. I, the, actually, now I'm just on the internet. One more time. Sorry. I'm in the cloud now. You're in the cloud. Exactly. How radical is that, huh? I'll use one of your terms. Um, I mean, but, but you do consult with not only um, families, doctors, um, not only here in the U.S. or California, but in the U.S. All over the world. The world, too. So, so again, what Dr. Frankel and what we're talking about here is just expert advice, uh, what we've seen over the years. Uh, but again, it's not to replace a one-on-one -on -one with your physician. Um, Dr. Frankel has numerous consultations with the patient and the physician. So if your doctor's open to this, invite them in. It's best to have as much information and arsenal battling what you're going through if it's something as severe as cancer. And so um, that- The kind of doctors, I mean, for them, it, it's, a, it's a cool free way because it's the same price and um, uh, he or she will get a reasonable 
reasonable introduction to cannabis because that's part of every visit. Um, so let's talk, let's talk about what one goes through with chemo radiation, but why cannabis does help for appetite stimulation, nausea, um, pain, um, and mood, mood, and mood. And mood. I mean, I mean, one thing that I'd like to say that I don't know how many other cancer patients <clears throat> have had this, but I imagine probably most of us for the first two or three months, I would wake up in the middle of the night and thinking, Oh God, I have cancer. Then I would think, no, that was a dream. And then I was a tiny bit more awake a few seconds later. I thought, no, it's real. And it was like, Oh, it's just, you know, devastating. And he couldn't go back to sleep. And that, that, I went, that was depressing, but I don't know how, I, I why I, if anything happier than I was before, um, I think it's like a second, if you get a second chance on life, if you take advantage of it, um, there's a lot of opportunities there. My mother used to tell me one thing that is, I think is a great thing to fault your life by. If you're walking along, you're going along, it could be a real trail, it could be a project, business, money venture, and you come across a big boulder, an obstruction, something, don't blame the rock. Don't blame that somebody else put the blockage there. Assume that in large part you got to that point because you got to that point on your own and look inwards, don't look outward, and you will then find a path either over the rock, to the right side, to the left side, maybe pushing the rock, that will take you to a better path that you could have never thought of. It's so true. I'm reading a book right now too that that is basically saying, hey, kind of don't sweat the small stuff. The sun came up yesterday, it's going to come up tomorrow. And what you do in between all that is up to you. So don't just like, ah, oh, the rock's in front of me. I can't do anything. I can't. You know what? Climb the rock. See other. Yeah. Other. And people always say, well, I don't know where to start. Just start. Corinne was mad. He's like, babe, I have a list of stuff I have to do. I'm stressed. She goes, don't use the word stress. Write it down. And she goes, and, and where you start? Just start. And I said, God, you're brilliant. That's why, <laughs> you know, women are. Well, I can't remember who said this quote, but when you get to a fork in the road, take it. Take it. Take it. Yeah. it just doesn't matter which path it is. Yeah. It's going to work out. If it's, it's like I, there's a pony somewhere, right? I think we all know that story. So it's um. So it it um, back to the fork in road. I took my mom for a drive this last weekend, and we went up in the hills. And where do we go? I said, just went. You know what? We ended up where we were. I mean, I said, we're not, you know, you know, if we get lost, great. If not, and we had a, we saw an adventure. She goes, God, I would have never have gone up there if it wasn't for you. And I said, you know, mom, I probably wouldn't have gone up there with, if I was by myself either. So let's go back what, to the. You know what Alex and I are going to do one weekend? What Alex and I are going to do one weekend? We're going to go, because LA is a car city, right? Yeah. Now the roads are all wide open and car rentals of like Lamborghinis and Ferraris. So for, we're going to like rent it for four hours and just go up the coast and just drive and get into, go into the canyons and, you know, where you, like where you do your biking. Yeah. Um, that should be a lot of fun. Well, I, we get one each or just, just, just go together. We'll go together. He'll drive. Yeah. There you it'll, go. It'll scare, it'll, it'll scare the crap out of me. He, he already scares the crap out of me, but he's a good driver. Well, let's let's get back on this cannabis th uh, topic, <laughs> topic here because uh, we can we can go on. Um, but I, you know, John, I think it's okay. This can evolve into like the car show thing. Where all right, so let's go yeah. on. There. What what yeah. one, a, a, a birthday gift that Corinne gave me one year was um, up at Sonoma Raceway, Formula One cars, and I I I raced them for the day. Was that a Bondurant's course? Uh, no, uh, it was just, um, uh, they do have an, uh, they, it, actually it might've been, it might've been, but they I, just, did that, I did that course. And, and it was, uh, well, is, is that the, that the instructor that the, uh, yeah. The, the, yeah. Bob, uh, Bob it, it was incredible. It was an incredible. So if anybody wants to surprise their loved one, their spouse or themselves, go up to Sonoma Raceway, rent, get into, you take a, take a course in the morning, you're in the class you know, and they talk about the course and what you do. And it's no, it's, it's, it's a uh, speed shifting. So 
Uh, but we did that and you're hitting a couple G's going around those corners and you're down below and it went, it was an incredible experience. So, um, either rent a Ferrari or Lamborghini up in the hills of LA or, or come up here to Northern California and, and go up to Sonoma. It's definitely worth it. Um, live life. You know, we only have one life. And as you just mentioned, you know, you had a second, second chance in life and you're going to live it. Um, let's go back to the topic of, you know, uh, can I use CBD or cannabis with chemotherapy? And a lot, how do you approach this conversation with an oncologist who is anti-cannabis? Because this happens all the time. I don't want to bring this up to my doctor, but I, I feel when this is your health, and you should share everything that you're doing so the doctor knows, okay, we can make some certain tweaks here. Because a lot of doctors will say, you know, okay, patient X, if I find out that you're using cannabis, I'm going to have to ask you to get another doctor. And so a lot of times they say, great, it happened to my aunt. She fired her doctor. She went, went to someone else. You know, yeah, so some you know, doctors have that. I mean, it's, it's, it's so ridiculous. It's so but ridiculous. I would share with uh, uh, families here in California or throughout the country, legal state or illegal state, it's not illegal to have that conversation. And if your doctor doesn't know this knowledge, say, can you recommend a doctor that would? Which is why you get a lot of doctor referrals, uh, not only here in California, but throughout the country say, I don't know about cannabis, but here's a doctor that I worked with or I feel confident recommending um, uh, you talk, talking to regarding this. So with cannabis, can cannabis, um, help with chemotherapy um, in battling the cancer, not only with nausea, appetite stimulation, mood, uh, and pain relief. Yeah. So what, as I look back upon the last five years since we've gone to this multi-molecule, multi-oil um, concept, it's, it's actually a very, very, very simple idea. If you go back to the plant from hundreds of thousands of years ago, it had CBD, THC, THCA, CBDA, all of these were about 1%, one and a half percent. But they, they were all about equal. And the two most common were CBD and THC, which then meant CBDA and THCA. But at much, 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 much lower concentrations than we have now. But um, <clears throat> which direction did you want me to go on this, John, again? Take the fork of the road. Take the fork in the road. <laughs> <laughs> so we, I would say starting, we started doing dose stuff nine years ago. And I'd say about seven years ago, we were starting on, if you look at a hill, on one side of the hill, we were looking what is going to help people with their nausea, with their appetite, with their pain, with their anxiety, with all the issues related to symptoms related to cancer and symptoms related to chemotherapy, including how do, is there a way of preventing neuropathy in, with chemotherapy? And there is. Uh, I and mean, we'll talk about this at another time in great detail. But CBD, whole plant CBD, at a dose of 30 milligrams a day, plus or minus, um, will, in the vast majority of patients, prevent them from getting neuropathy. So that's one huge benefit. One, not to get the neuropathy, but two, I've seen a number of patients that are using a neurocytotoxic chemotherapy um, and they're developing neuropathy, but the drug's really working and their cancer is going away, but the doctor then had to stop because that neuropathy, people would rather, it's called suicide pain. It can be really awful. So we've come up actually with treatment that's transdermal for the pain, but it's much better um, if, you, if you're using a CBD, you're gonna be able to, to tolerate the chemotherapy better and you won't get neuropathy, which is a big deal. Um, the other um, thing before we go into the nausea and the more routine things is that CBD has recently been shown and it's more than, it's at least two studies and I think it's three or four studies that on, with different chemotherapy agents, CBD um, prevents the chemotherapy agent from losing its potency. From wow. Being, yeah, because Chemo, if chemotherapy didn't become resistant, things would be way, way better. So honestly, just for that one reason, people should be taking cannabis and it's preventing neuropathy. And the acid molecules and THC are all helping with um, nausea, appetite, sleep, the early morning awakening that people get um, 
when they start feeling anxious during the day, um, this keeps you asleep more. Um, I have people kind of double the dose an hour before their chemotherapy or radiation because the, to be a little stoned um, when you're getting chemo or other IV drugs, I can personally, from personal experience now, it is way better to be a little bit medicated. And it personally, I mean, I, I tried the standard meds, um, including pain meds, including narcotics, because I was having a lot of pain. I mean, a lot of pain. And uh, I really didn't want to be on the narcotics. Um, so I stopped, one day I was having excruciating pain and I was seeing a patient and I was up at the board. I was standing up in front of it. And all of a sudden this hip pain came in that felt like a knife was stabbing. And I thought, how do I keep myself together with this, these patients that are in the, in the room? And I just guts through it. And afterwards, I talked to my office manager, Alex, whom you know very well, who's like a third son to me. Um, and I just took a, a pretty good dose of THC. And in 30 minutes, my pain was gone. I mean, the, and I, I was going to call my doctor for some other pain pills. And wh why would I not want to get reached for THC more? But you know what? Even I was assuming that it couldn't help this pain. This pain is so bad. There's no way. And I hope everybody's going to be okay with it, but I'm going to need narcotics for this pain. I've not used one narcotic pill the whole time. Um, it, it, that's not it, true. It, it, that's not true. I, I tried one and I didn't, it didn't help me and it made me sick. So, and I used to love narcotics, by the way. They, I mean, I, any excuse for narcotic was, but it, 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 THC is better at pain when it's really severe pain. And for the, uh, for a lot of the pain is inflammatory pain and THCA, um, the, the raw form THC acid is turning out to be the treatment for arthritis. And what I'm doing now for more and more patients and especially the chemo patients that have inflammatory process as part of their chemo, the CBD and THCA are important. And it turns out for all these people, these four molecules help the, the nausea, the vomiting, you know, appetite, sleep, anxiety. Um, and on the other side of the mountain, we were looking at what's a good dose for having an anti-cancer effect, turned out to be the same dose. Um, now, I'm not saying that we have the dose to treat cancer. I, what I am saying though, is there, I have no doubts that what we're doing is real for both the, on the symptom side of the mountain and the cannabis and the, and the cancer side of the mountain. And if the same dose, work, which makes sense, works for both, then what's the argument? What possible argument could somebody have? Since we're on dose, and I know we're gonna, we're, we're kind of bouncing here, but more is not always better. And it drives me nuts when I, you know, go online or I hear, hear other people talking, it's like, you have to blast it as much as you possibly can. And sometimes that's not always a good thing. Uh, can you talk about uh, the benefits of milligram dosing versus gram dosing and, and, and age, their current health condition? Uh, you know, you've worked with patients that have been elderly and they take a high, high, high dose, say a gram of, of oil, which is a very uncomfortable feeling. And I hope, I mean, I always describe it like, uh, and I've never taken a gram. I took a capsule one time of Corinne's father when, we, when we, Corinne and I were down in Santa Barbara and we had to pick up some medicine for him and, and our normal dispensary was up here in the San Francisco Bay area. And we ended up getting a capsule and it turned out it was a quarter, or I was, it was, excuse me, it was, it was a half gram of oil and that I shook for two days. <laughs> so. It's an uncomfortable feeling. It's not something you can. How did that dose of a natural plant that makes you people violently ill be the right dose? I mean, it just, we have to use logic to some extent. That's ridiculous. And also, I mean, to me, why not use the, the since the, every major cannabinoid and even the major terpenes, every one has been shown to be anti cancer. Every one has been shown to help with pain and other issues. Um, I can't think of any reason not to use it, whether you believe it's just going to be helping you feel better and sleep better and tolerate chemo and as well as preventing side effects and preventing long-term effects like neuropathy. Um, 
also there's just an article out that CBD, there's a chemo drug, doxorubicin, and there's a number of drugs related to it that really knock out your heart. Um, and CBD prevents that heart damage from the rubicins. Um, so these are big deals. I mean, they're really big deals. And, and while it's, it's helping the chemo work, I think the chemo helps the cannabis work. Um, and I, I'm not anti-chemo. It depends it, what, it, what it comes down to at the end of the day, from my suggestion with people is, well, one, their history and how they've been doing and tolerating stuff. Um, but I, I, I think that if there's a 30 or 40% chance that you can get that data that you're going to have a good response, that's worth it. Maybe yeah. 40%. But if they give you 10%, I mean, I'm, that means it doesn't work. Um, and then you're doing it just so that you're doing something. And I would say just do the cannabis. Is, isn't, there's a study that shows uh, chemotherapy um, success here in America is 2.3% and it's 2.1% percent success rate in Australia uh, or vice versa. I don't know why they use Australia as, as a marker, but I've heard that numerous times in a lot of the integrative oncology conferences. Um, uh, you know, and that's, that's one reason why we did not do that with Crin's diagnosis with pancreatic. I mean, Crin had three blood tests and all blood tests came back, no cancer. Blows my mind. And then we do an ultrasound and they're like, actually it is here. And so, uh, you know, pancreatic is just a different, different breed. Uh, was that she RGCC? One more time, sorry. Was that RGCC testing from Greece? We, we, we did, we, that was one of the three, and that one came back with, with zero, zero cancer as well. And I actually, do, I've seen that with, uh, on a number of occasions. I don't trust that test. Yeah, and actually, I'm, so, I'm, I'm actually have a call with that gentleman um, uh, this week, actually. And that's one of the questions I will ask him again. You know, I asked him at a conference one time, and you know, he, he, it wasn't uh, something he wanted to talk about in public. And then I never, we never connected afterwards. And so I said, I'm not trying to throw you. Interesting is to send, depending what kind of testing he has, to send him a sample of the quad. Yeah. 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 I, should, I said, you know, I'm not here to, to throw you under the bus at all. This is not what I, what I, you know, because chemo we don't, doesn't work all the time. We don't know. Cannabis doesn't work all the time. You know, other, other modalities, stem cells don't work at time. You know, and so I, I just wanted to know why why that one came out because it did it did give us a lot of hope at that time. I still remember it. It was July twenty fourth, and we were down in Mexico treating Corin, um, you know, uh, for for pancreatic cancer. Let's let's go back to nausea. Um, you know, does CBD or cannabis help with nausea, and why? Because this is something that comes up all the time. You just talked about it. You know, um, you know when people go through. Uh, getting blasted with chemo it goes after every cell in the body good and bad where uh depends if you want to do it cannabis just goes after the bad cells and can you talk about how it why it helps with with patients going through nausea well it, it, it helps all cells i mean and unfortunately it can differentiate between cancer and not cancer so there's a lot of different support that it needs to do in the, the normal cells and because they all have cannabinoid receptors they wouldn't be there and even the mitochondria inside the cells, which are the energy producers, they are affected by THCA, which I think and why a lot of these neuromuscular disorders are responding to THC acid, which is, I mean, if somebody that's been in a wheelchair for years and you give them some THCA drops and they walk, I mean, it, it's, a, it's like a, a Jesus moment. Um, it, you know, it's amazing. So. Yeah, I mean, it just makes sense to me that um, the four most common molecules would be the ones that would be the most effective. Um, now, that could be proven wrong, I suppose. Um, but I don't know how. I mean, I don't know how adding in a THCA or CBDA is going to hurt somebody. I mean, there's so many benefits. And now, CBDA is 20 times, or is it 2,000? Way, 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 way more active than CBD. So there's also anti-anxiety effects with um, CBDA. So I think it's, and you know, we're, we're seeing results that are spectacular, it really are. And I'm not, you've known me for a long time, I'm not the guy that wants to claim stuff that I, 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 do, I don't believe. Um, well, and, and I like it too, if you don't know it, you say, I don't know, but I'll do the research. You know, a lot yeah. of people say, yep, 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 yep. And that's where the part that drives me nuts about this industry 
is I never want to give anybody false hope. Um, you know, giving them hope is incredible. And I think hope goes a long way. And you and I have talked about this, you know, even walking out of your hospital, out of your office and, or walking in your office and seeing patients walk out of there and they're a little, have a little more pep in their step. And then you say, Hey, can I give you a hug? And I said, I would love a hug. And sometimes just that extra hug. And now they're walking out of there hundred feet tall going, I'm going to get, beat this thing. And I remember that lady that when I came into your office, she was from Utah. She and her husband drove from Utah um, to try this. And that, we can go on and on and on. But that's, that's, that's just what I share with cannabis refugees. You know, before you uproot your family, your life, your doctors, your jobs, and move to a legal state like California, come out here for a little vacation, two weeks, two days, you know, whatever you can do to see if this actually works for you. Meet with a medical professional. Go to L.A., beautiful day. You know, sit by down on the beach, go see Dr. Frankel. And, now and with your masks on and six feet apart. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. With what? A tin can. What was that, Dr. Frankel? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> John and I earlier in this, we were joking. I, I actually have a, a meeting up, uh, a person of the feminine persuasion with masks, six foot distance in a park this afternoon. Um, with pomegranate juice. So, <laughs> so instead of yelling, I was thinking, if I could get two empty cans and could find the string. I mean, I met, I used to have, when I was a kid, I had a tin, com, tin can phone to my neighbor. <laughs> Wait, hey, man. <laughs> That's the millennials today. They, they, they don't even know what, a, what, a, what, a, what a, a rotary phone is, you know? Oh, right, yeah. But I think, I think that, that, that will break the ice with her, too. So let me know, let me know how that date, date goes. Um, tin can date. Does she know you're a cannabis doctor? Yeah. You know, and I'm certain that that has gone well and not so well with, with, with your introduction sometimes, huh? Uh, I would say more negative than positive. Wow. wow. Especially, especially being open-minded in California and especially Southern California. Yeah. People in the Venice and Marina area. I had wow. a boyfriend, he was a stoner. I think you're, you're going to dismiss me as a stoner and that's it. You know, um, I, what, I don't even know what is a stoner. What is a stoner? Well, it's funny you say that, Stoner. The first time I, 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 I when I went in to get my uh, first medical cannabis card in 2009 or 2010, and I walked into this office, and it was a beautiful office up here in the San Francisco Bay Area, and on the wall, it said, it had a poster. This is what a Stoner looks like. And it was a police officer, a mom, a teacher, a grandfather, a baby. President. Yeah. You know, and, so, and so I was like, wow, what a great way to define that, you know, because a lot of people have the stigma, hey, you smoke pot, you're a stoner, um, you know, and, and even when Corinne and I started this, this organization, I didn't put my last name in, in, in anything. I did press releases and I just say, John, and a lot of people in the industry got upset with me for that reason. How can you be, how can you, this is 2010. And I would say, you know what? My pat, this wasn't my life. <laughs> you know, a lot of ex-colleagues, uh, a lot of family members, you know, don't know about, uh, you know, what we're doing. And then when Corinne's dad had the turnaround, because um, we really didn't know about cannabis then. We knew it would help with appetite stimulation, uh, which, is, which is the next topic I'd like to talk to you about. You know, we came across a study that showed 40% of cancer patients pass a malnutrition, wasting stages, before cancer takes over. Same thing with AIDS patients, the wasting syndrome, before it, yeah, AIDS take over. And so... Um, uh, using cannabis, you had, uh, what was her name? Brownie Mary. I think Dr. Abrams used to work at, uh, she used to work with him up at, uh, she didn't work with him. She was, she would help the patients up there at, at University of California, San Francisco. And she would bring in the brownies for the, the HIV, HIV patients. You know, and it was helping with their appetite and their mood, you know, and, uh, and nausea and pain. And so she was onto something, you know, but I think they banned her out of there <laughs> for, for bringing that in. Um, but that was one of the things that made Corinne and I talk I about. I was banned from the Society for Cannabis Clinicians because I brought the first CBD bottles. And I, I thought all the docs would want them. And I was just. Alan, I was at that, that meeting with you. You were there? Around that. And I remember I gave you a ride back to, to BART. And it was. Right, 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 right. Blown away. And I was just blown away on, on their reaction and what they yeah. said. And I was like. God, these this, this, these are these are doctors working together, and it wasn't only with you. You would have another doctor speaking about his or her practice and what they've seen with their patients, and the other doctors are like, and I'm thinking, 
come on guys show some respect here we're all learning and you're sharing your, your your what you have seen and what you've seen has worked in your own personal practice doesn't mean that it works for everybody but you're saying hey i've i've seen this work and this is what i use you know if it can help and save one person why not share that but anyway appetite it worked for my family. yeah we, we, didn't the, we didn't know the medical benefits then and so uh, why the cbd or cannabis uh, THC and the other cannabinoids help with appetite? Um, primarily by stimulating the appetite center in the brain. It's, a, it's a, mainly a direct effect. Uh -huh. But the THCA, CBDA um, definitely are having you know, very powerful effects. But they, THC will stimulate the appetite. Um, also CBD by, through its anti-anxiety issues, anxiolytic things, we all, if we get anxious, we get a little sick to our stomach, all of us. If we get really agitated, we just can't eat. Well, the CBD part tends to really help tremendously with the agitation, so then that's one more way where the appetite is, is increased. So you have THC working in direct appetite stimulant, um, you have THCA and CBDA being powerful anti-nausea, and you have CBD that's calming people, which, with, which also helps them eat. Let what is the best for a cancer patient, you know, and at what work, because we have a lot of cancer patients, we're in the top of a cancer right now. Um, what would you recommend for one of your patients that may be going through cancer? Would you say, take it, because you hear a lot of cancer patients saying, you know, this is one of our dear friends, she, she recently passed, um, a family, my mom's best friend actually, uh, but she was finding success with, you know, an edible because she had never been a smoker. She's wanted an edible and it helped with the nausea. It did help with the pain um, and help and help with appetite. And so do you recommend an app, uh, an edible versus a tincture versus a vaporization of smoking? Um, primarily I recommend um, extracts, which are tinctures, um, you know, extracts, capsules, transdermal, uh, to me, I, I get the fact that people love edibles, but from a doctor's perspective, I would much, much, much rather see somebody, here, let me grab my capsule, take a capsule, and an hour later have a Sara Lee brownie. It'd be way more tasty, be healthier than the, the really, I mean, the, it, it's not, these, the people who are making, baking these things are not, you know, scientists just to say the least and also the heat um, not so much for the candies but for the all the baked goods you're you maybe decarb your thc before you bake them but while you're baking them for the 35 40 minutes you're subjecting every cannabinoid to 350 degrees which totally changes everything and that's why it's so much heavier and so much more sedating because there's a lot of oxidation of cannabis products you know years ago I want to say like 2011, it may have been you talking about, you know, about edibles. And it's like, listen, if you want a edible, just get the most, what you want to eat and pour your dose right. onto, on the, and onto that brownie, cookie, uh, yogurt, whatever it is, and eat it that way. And you know what you have here. This has been tested. You know this because you've eaten it numerous times. If it's a cracker, if it's an Oreo, if, you know, whatever. Right. Just your normal dose onto that and eat it that way and enjoy them both. You know what's happening. You know, yeah. you're putting, we were that. doing, we got, I got into a thing, buying those chocolate covered cherries that have you know, maraschino cherries and yeah. injecting in a little tiny bit of the oil that was dosed mm -hmm. or chocolate truffles works well. Something where you can put the medicine in after it's baked or cooked. Um, truffles were the best. They were great. And we, and this was not um, part of any business. This was, Part of an afternoon of fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How could that not be fun? Research and development. We'll put under that, huh? R and D. R and D. R and D. R and D is right. Um, let's talk about the top. Well, what what are your thoughts on microdosing? And I know we've had this conversation over the years. Um, and normally, you with your Quad four is what you call it. The, you know, the quad four meaning THC, 
THCA, CBD, and CBDA. Um, can you talk about that? You, because I've heard you talk about 10 milligrams of each, up to 20 milligrams of each. And so, what do, what are you seeing with your patients, and has that changed over the years? What was changed over the years is that we first were using CBD, then we, when data came out with CBD and THC, each at 10 milligrams, whole plant, three times a day, we copied that patent. I mean, this, was a, this was a GW patent that led to the trial, you know, showing that glioblastomas benefited by 30 milligrams a day of CB, whole plant CBD and 30 milligrams of whole plant THC. And when I saw the published article, I was thinking, first of all, I thought, oh, I'm freaking brilliant. I mean, I came up with the exact same milligram, exactly the same milligram that these guys who have billions of dollars to deal with. And so that's good for my patients. But then I started you know, thinking realistically, how did I come up with the exact same milligrams? Because I read their patent before they did the study, like five years ago. So the, we're getting more and more and more data with whole plant medicine in the real world as part of pharma studies. And that's where I get my data. I mean, to me, and I think my patients should want me to get my information. I mean, I'm a friend of Mishulam and that office. We've done a n- number of things together. Um, I sent him all my articles. I'm getting, by the way, I'm getting a couple published finally. I, I, I hooked up with a group that really wants to publish a lot of case histories. And what I have are a lot of case histories. What I don't have is the time or the, I, I don't know how to format it exactly the way it needs to be formatted. Okay. So we have a we have a bargain now. I give them, I just write it, they yeah. redo it, and then we'll publish it. Uh, I, it's gonna, we're going to have a lot of publication. It just brings you back to uh, uh, life experience, patient experience, and personal experience of what you know works, doesn't work, and that's with anything in, in life. You know, hey, I know where I I can go shopping. I know that the food's safe or, or whatever you're doing. Um, can we talk about that all cancers aren't treated the same. You know, what you do for prostate cancer is not what you do for glioblastoma uh, and, and, and as well as uh, treating a pediatric cancer patient up to a geriatric can- pa- uh, cancer patient. Well, to be honest, um, I know people would like to hear that we have, that we're so smart that we know exactly what to do for this cancer and that cancer and this person. Um, there definitely are a number of individual differences in administration, um, timing, but overall, um, I, I, to me, I, I don't know which one of those four oils is going to be the best for that cancer and that patient. So this is just cannabis. When we have enough THCV, which has also been shown to have positive, really positive anti-cancer effect and neuroprotective effect, add that in. We're going to add that in. It'll be a it'll be a five drug thing, and that probably take another year before there's enough THCV to use for that. But I'm going to be adding THCV to my regimen um, in, in a couple of weeks from now. Um, and so do you include? I know you you do these you know the cannabinoids into your system. Do you take other daily natural supplements, uh, vitamins, uh, other other types of oils? Yeah, uh, Tom Tom's there. Oh, well, vitamin. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. And, I, and, and can you talk about... This, this is really what makes me run. I run <laughs> Rayovac batteries, and I suggest you get a pack now. This is COVID safe. COVID safe. <laughs> you, you're, you're, you, you have outlasted the Energizer bunny, huh? Well, what happened is I ordered an oximeter because okay. I got sick from, but that still hasn't come. I have to cancel it, but it needed AAA batteries. The batteries came. So I have all these AAA batteries and um, do you need any? <laughs> oh, I have a whole refrigerator full. Thank you though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And everything, the, everything's a plug in now anyway too, you know, but I have a handful of batteries around the house or uh, uh, flashlights around the house that don't work. So they do need the batteries, you know? So I'll tell you, I, for my grandkids, I only get toys that are rechargeable through USB. That's it. What, why is it? You have these extra flashlights around the house for emergency purposes. And when you go to use them, they're dead. They're drained. And so I spend more money on batteries that I put in flashlights that I never use that, uh, 
that, that are just sitting there. And I mean, I kid you not, I pop, I'm like, does it work? Let's put another, some more batteries in there. And then I'm like, cool, it works. Go back, you know, a month, two months later, you know, try it and, and it's out. Um, you, you were talking about, uh, you know, we don't know. And hopefully one day it'll get to the point where you say, you have prostate, take this. You have pancreatic, take this. You have glioblastoma, take this. We're doing a little study with, with prostate right. cancer. I've got seven patients now who are in their mid to late 60s with very, very early prostate cancer. They have PSAs of around 10, 12. They've all seen urologists, oncologists. Everybody just wants to wait and do nothing. So when they came in to see me, I thought, no, oh, this is an opportunity to try something different for a few months and see how they do. So what I'm doing with these people, I just have some early results, but um, is I'm just putting them on THCA, like 10 milligrams three times a day, 10 to 15 milligrams three times a day. And one, which I wasn't surprised at all, is that THCA for both men and women really helps with urinary frequency and getting up at night. I mean, I used to get up seven times or six times. I get up once at like four in the morning. THCA is amazing for the prostate. And I, the, we have two results back where the, these guys have gone and gotten follow-ups since going on just THCA. In both cases, again, this is early, but in both ca cases, uh, their PSAs dropped substantially um, and their urination decreased okay. substantially. Yeah. So this is an opportunity to see what about just using THCA by itself? I mean, that would save a lot of money. Not only that, if THCA was really protective or, or, or therapeutic for prostate cancer, anybody pretty much anywhere in the world can get some raw bud, right? Um, and that's, I'm going to be eating that after my lunch. Sprinkle it and go, go that way. Yeah. I mean, and by the way, the cruncher I use is just a nutcracker thing. And it's just fine for actual making it. I mean, a little bit of this in a little yogurt is all you need. I mean, that's and, and, and so for our listeners that say, okay, that's bud. And I put that and I eat it. Will I feel, feel something? All right. That's a good question. And I have a good story. Okay. Uh, I had a patient, um, I don't know, pre COVID who I was talking with and we're talking about THCA and that it's not psychoactive and raw bud is not psychoactive. And she said to me, Oh, Dr. Frank, I must disagree. And I said, oh, what happened? She said, well, I took some bud, this little piece, um, a few months ago when I was stoned for two days and I said, Hmm, where was the butt? And she said, in the garage, in the garage. How long has it been in the garage? And she goes, uh, let's see, Billy left for college. You know, it was, that time, it was like 15 years it had been sitting. So over time, if you just leave it, it's going to convert to THC. And that's what happened. Um, so I, I think we mentioned earlier, but we're doing a very, very, very simple study. I just called the owner of one of the collectives and um, got some stuff that just been by coincidence just happened to be sitting for a year and a half. And we'll send it off for cannabinoids. Um, we have the certificates of authenticity from when it was tested a year and a half ago, and it's the same batch. So, do you need some? Because when Corinne was ill, I grew about six plants in our backyard and it, it produced a lot and we would juice. And um, right when I was getting ready to take it down is when, she, right when she passed. And, uh, and so I have stuff, I kid you not, uh, that's two and a half years old. Would you like to see, did, did, do any tests? It was, it was some beautiful stuff, but two and a half years old. And I've given it to friends and they say, this is, this is incredible. I like the feeling of it, but it's not, it hasn't been stored. I just put it, it's in a, right. for, I, I need about two pounds to do a test. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, about, there's about that there too. Yeah. You know, I, Rayburn and I used to joke around with people about that all the time. You know, you need a sample. Yes, we do. How much? <laughs> you know, about so after three or four grams. I said, why do you guys need that much? And he said, we like it. <laughs> so, yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, if anybody's surprised that I have cannabis here, they should. You're you're foolish. I mean, this is my life. It's my love. It, it cured. It helped. I'm not going to say cure. I don't like to use that word. But yeah. the none of the doctors have ever seen. Now, let's say my PSA gone from six thousand down to what they said it was going to be with two hundred. My mindset would have been cool, 200 is like nothing. But then it kept going down and down and down and down. And that's where um, no doctor I've spoken to has seen this happen. So. And, and no doctor, what, sorry? No doctor has seen a PSA. Oh, 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 dr drop. Yeah, I know. Drop, like, and, I share, stay low and stay low. When I share, and I think I, uh, a couple of these patients ha have spoken to you um, that have called about pr prostate, and I'm like, you got to call Dr. Frankel. I mean, he's not only works with numerous patients over the years with this, this, this is what he's going, what he's been battling. And what do you think of, uh, unhealthy PSA numbers? And they'll say, you know, 27, 35. And I'm like, try 6,000. And I said, what? Yeah. And I said, what is he doing? I said, give him a call, you know? And so you, again, sharing your personal experience. Also, I'm helping people work with this. There's some patients that should be taking hormonal blockers as part of their treatment, and they're stuck in a urologist's office that's not, not with it or whatever. But yeah, no, I'm becoming a prostate cancer expert. You know, and again, you were adopted into this. You know, you were kind of like, it, it was something that you were pulled in to say, hey, it was a mountain. It was a big boulder that was placed in front of me, and I had to figure out what to do with it. God, God bless mom, huh? I mean, that, that's mom, mom, mom was wonderful. Um, she was wonderful. Keep talking here for a second. I'm going to close this door because there sounds like there's a uh, chainsaw or a weed eater go, going down. So if you want, I'm, I'm going to yeah. throw a question at you. Um, uh, God, I was just going to go from this to that. You know, on how all cancers are treated differently. And can we talk about the ingestion methods, but also what you're hearing for uh, rectal cancer, uh, vaginal cancer, penile, can penile cancer, um, and what there a lot of patients are reading and doing with um, uh, suppositories. Right. Okay. Well, it turns out that at least cannabis oil in, in the way that it's generally prepared um, it's just not absorbed rectally. Um, and there were a number of tests that were done both at University of Mississippi and we did it in Santa Monica where we gave a handful of patients um, suppositories that had, I think about 350 milligrams of THC each. And then we drew their blood and measured their, their levels at one hour, two hours, three hours. And it was zero. I mean, zero. And we couldn't give that dose to them orally because it, that'd be way too dangerous. I mean, that, but um, it doesn't work. And now there's a form of THC called, and people are making a big deal of it, but I, I'm not that impressed. That just means, and this is a patent by Dr. El Soleil, and I don't mean anything negative in his name. If you take THC and you add this molecule hemisuccinate, then it does get a pretty decent absorption. But you can't just take acetate, mix it with THC oil, and you're gonna have it. We're working on a different way, which is similar to the transdermal treatment for neuropathy, where there are excipients that will help vaginal absorption, rectal absorption, um, and mixing them in. And we, we, we finally did one that so we couldn't, because, because of Ramadan, if you can believe it, because of Ramadan, we couldn't get the testing done at University of Mississippi, because Dr. El Soleil is Egyptian. And last year, same time, they're doing some blood tests, and he sends me a note that is one of the funniest notes I've ever gotten in my life. He says, Dr. Allen, you're an Egyptian thing. It was a phone, Dr. Allen, I'm so sorry I didn't get back to you. I was at Ramadan. And I said, you know what? I hear that all the time as an excuse. <laughs> anyway, he's awesome. And he's willing, when we started drawing blood and sending it to him, in the University of Mississippi, that I didn't have any issues that it's legal to send blood, even if it has cannabinoids in it, it's legal. Um, but he, then he said, you know, it would be great if we could get the oils that the pay. I said, do you want me to send cannabis oil, 
to the University of Mississippi, the National Institute of Drug Abuse. And I mean, I remember this conversation so well. He said, yeah, Alan, you think I'm trying to capture you? And he says, I said, okay, fine. So we started sending him the oils. And we had a little, by the way, in case somebody's listening to this set, would like to donate to a very good project. Um, we need to, with all these products, we need to figure out how to get a lab going that will test them properly and will test a final product. I mean, if, if this were a bottle right here, an invisible bottle, and you knew precisely what terpenes, flavonoids, waxes, everything are in it, and what concentration, and like limonene, X nanograms per ml, we'll know what that is. It's, when I was talking to Dr. Raber, to me it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable that we've been doing testing for nine and a half years and we still can't test the final product. So the best anybody can do is to measure the original oil and then follow the dilutions. But we don't know if it's right. And I, I, to me, until we can measure terpenes and flavonoids in the final product, anybody that says what terpene is based upon what's in the weed is, is what's in the, excuse me, cannabis, um, it doesn't work. So we're, we're going to do this after Ramadan. Um, if anybody out there, when does Ramadan end? I think it's soon. Um, but wouldn't that be a great, and maybe we'll post it on your site, because I don't want to post it on my site, the results, the final results of all these big people, everybody, just buy a bottle of like the, the high CBD products and find out what the terpenes are. I think a number, I'm not going to mention any companies, but there's one company, and I think there's many of them, but there's one I know for certain that started out making really great products, I think as good as anybody made, and now they're, they're, they still call it cannabis, but it's, it's mostly hemp-based. So what people are doing is they'll take a little bit of cannabis, they'll, they're, it's like cutting drugs, like putting in something else. So they're putting in hemp-based CBD, so when people test the cannabinoids, it's what it could be whatever it is, or whatever you want it to be, but the terpenes aren't in there. And until we can test that, we really don't know what the quality of the medicine is. That's why testing is so important. And I share that with patients all the time. You know, go in there. If you don't see a test result for that product, if you're purchasing it in a dispensary, go to another dispensary or try another product. I mean, nowadays with regulations, they're really cracking down on that. And, and make sure you, you, you uh, ask for them. And if you don't, you're the patient. You know, you're putting this in your body. So you know, would you go out and drink a bottle of isopropyl alcohol? No. And there's a reason why the winos aren't down there in the corner buying 69 cent bottle of isopropyl alcohol. And well, it. Our, our president recommends that you drink bleach. Oh, that's right, huh? Yeah. <laughs> There's everything, even the coronavirus. Um, let's go into, you were talking about testing, you're talking about terpenes and the different cannabinoids. Let's talk about, um, is there a certain, um, I'm going to catch myself here, strain, because we really don't talk strains anymore, but is there a certain like indica or sativa? Is indica or sativa better for nausea uh, than something else? No. You, you can't, I mean, the, the thing is, uh, you, there are no real sativas or indicas anymore because they've been crossed. That's a sativa, right. a typical sativa plant would take 14, 15 weeks to flower as opposed to your typical indica, which is eight weeks. Who do you think wants to have to wait 14 weeks? So what we're doing with one of the THCV strains, strains that take 14 weeks um, is crossing it with the CBD plant probably will make it down to an eight week plant, which then theoretically you're turning a sativa into an indica. So what is it? it? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What matters is what the chemistry is. That's what matters. You know, you mentioned C sativa and indica, um, like Corinne's father, um, he had a heart arrhythmia, you know, so he had to stay away from any upbeat stuff. And back then, you know, it was... <laughs> Like, like coffee, yeah. Up then was keeping him away from, from a sativa strain for that purpose. And again, everyone's different. When he would use a sativa strain, you would see a change in his reaction to that. And, so we, and we didn't have labs back then. It was the blind leading the blind. We had trial and error, knock on wood. Thank goodness we didn't have okay. any 
I think I've come up with a reasonable idea to explain what's going on in the dispensaries with the sativa indica thing. Okay. So no matter how much I'm going to say, look, these are all crossed together and we don't really know. At the same time, if, if you were a buyer for a dispensary, or if I were a buyer, a buyer of a dispensary, I would have a group of people try every strain. Now, there, some are going to say this is more uplifting and some are going to say this is a little bit more sedating. So the sedating ones get listed as indicas and the more uplifting ones as sativas. So I think that's actually helpful information. I, I was telling people up until this past year that it, it doesn't matter at all because we don't know about sativa and indica, but we do know that this strain for the majority of people is more uplifting. We don't know why, but um, if, we were, if we could check all the molecules inside, we would. I mean, when I was in Mishulam's lab, he showed me his list. This is on paper. Dr. Mishulam, it was thumbtacked to a wall, and you could tell the paper was years old. Every time they found a new cannabinoid or terpene or flavonoid or wax molecule, they wrote it down on this paper. And it was now, the last, when I was there, it was 999 unique molecules that they've isolated in cannabis. I mean, now they're... It's beyond that. But. That that will go on the the, the Christie's market uh, down the road for a million bucks, like a John Lennon, Paul McCartney, uh, you know, song written down on a on a napkin, you know. So that, that's that's a great. Right. Story. Well, that's right. why I stole it. I stole it and put it in my. Okay, heart. there you go. It'll be on the, on eBay, right? Like with right. Tom Tom Brady's jersey. Um, the one thing you're talking about, you know, letting all your employees try that, you know, if you were in the dispensary. I still can't wrap my head around the cannabis cups when they award, you know, this is the not number one uh, 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 bud in, in this, in, you know, that was submitted. I understand wine tasting, spit it out, but how do you tell, if, you know, is this, is this over, you know, a year process or is it over the weekend where they got, okay, that's Alan's. Yep. That's a nine. Oh, that's John. Okay. And then it's, what's your name again? Yeah. <laughs> now, when they go down five more, so how do you actually know, and how are they testing this? I mean, I, that's, that, when I always say, oh, yeah, we're can Cannabis Cup winners. How? I mean, I, I, I don't understand I that. It's pretty political. Yeah, a little, like a lot of stuff in the industry, you know, but yeah. it, that's one thing. I mean, I'll, I'll, come on how, could, how could everybody agree that this is the best strain here at this? Yeah. And, I, I don't go to those events anymore. Yeah. It, uh, you know. I'm not going to learn anything. I don't tend to learn very much. It's not worth the yeah. time. Well, it's, I think it's a, it's a fun, fun getaway. And if anybody has never. It is. And they, they have a lot of cute girls there. Definitely interesting. I mean, you, 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 uh, I, I remember with Mike Hyde one time, we were in Colorado and he went down, he was, you know, talking about the Cash Hyde Foundation and pediatric cancer. And he went through and he's an incredible, you know, father one, but also incredible man, very knowledgeable, um, but very um, personable. And he went, up and down there hundreds and hundreds and Chris and I were following he had a bullhorn and he just went through and he said where are you guys from and it was amazing to see how many people from around the country and around the world came to this cannabis cup when cannabis became recreational legal in the state state of Colorado and you know it changed a lot of people's lives it it it, it brought down a lot of uh uh, uh stereotypes uh but also broke you know, that it is helping. It is, it is medicine. Um, and I, and I, and I remember when Corinne and I got into this and Corinne was like, come on, is this really medicine? Is this really medicine? And she started doing her research and this was before we really got into this, you know, and she realized, oh my gosh, why isn't everybody taking this? You know, you show, showed me all your vitamins and supplements. You know, I tell people all the time, treat it as a vitamin or supplement. You don't have to be high to have the results. You know, you can take the THCA. T it's a nutrient. It's a Sorry? Nutrient. It's a nutrient. It's a nutrient. Nutrients. Yeah. And so, so the I answer, you know, your question, you asked me about, a few minutes ago you had one question. Oh, well, it's gone. That question. That question, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, we, you know, I think this show dialogue, we should try, keep it, 
casual enough that it could it could come across like the Seinfeld car show. Totally. Let's let's keep it that way. Talk talk talking about that. So let's do let's let's. Let, I have a great idea. Let's do it in a car. You know. Let's do it in a car. Go up the coast. Two comedians drinking coffee, and we could do it that way. It's right. funny. Um, I did a. I I was in Boston. Wouldn't that be fun? Well, it's funny. I was in Boston and I had, and we were talking, um, a nurse I work with, Beth, we were talking and she said, we should have recorded this whole conversation. I mean, we drove from one meeting to the next and it was just talking about cannabis and we went all over and she's like, gosh, we should have, we should have, we should have recorded that. And so, but I, 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 I agree with you. So let's, you know what, tell Alex, when he doesn't want to drive, we'll get in a Ferrari. You and I will get in a Ferrari and, and drive the hills of LA and, and we'll do a show for Alex and I have talked about it. I mean, you know, he's yeah. a, a major, major car aficionado. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, have you watched that uh uh Seinfeld's uh uh cars and comedians or you know, comedians? Yeah, yeah. I think it's great. And plus, you know, the you know, the cars that he's getting, the driving and the history of these cars. Yeah. They're not all his cars. You know, he's borrowing these cars. And I remember I, they've got garages for them and they'll loan them out to people. And well, I remember this one, he broke down. And he's like, Oh no, it was a switch on a, maybe an, an old Austin. And uh, he switched. He's like, Ooh, I broke it, you know? And so, you yeah. know, like I, I'm afraid to tell the owner about this too, but anyway, Alan, I, you know, I appreciate your uh, knowledge, uh, your personality, uh, your stories. Um, uh, you know, not only about your patient stories, but also your own personal stories with your Thanks. family, you and your health. And, you know, I, I thank you for coming on and uh, trusting in what, what, what I do, what we do over here. Uh, and, and I want to get, well, next, how about next topic? We'll talk about um, uh, autoimmune diseases. And I know you've had some incredible blogs. So if you haven't been to Alan's site, greenbridgemedical.com. Um, um, greenbridgemed.com. Excuse me greenbridgemed.com. You can see uh, a lot about Alan, um, what he's written over the years, what he's experienced, his personal stories, what he's done with patients, and some of his research. One thing, I don't know if you if you got out of this podcast, is that, you know, Dr. Frankel is uh, a very personal guy, but he's a researcher, and he reads and reads and reads, and not only does he read, he reads a lot of patents. You know, what are these pharmaceutical companies spending billions of dollars on, you know, even like Sativex? You know, W Pharmaceutical for, for MS, you know, it's 2.75 milligrams of CBD, 2.75 milligrams of THC. That's the secret sauce. It's not like what you have in Dr. Pepper or Coca-Cola or McDonald's in their secret sauce. It's, you know, this is cannabis and people have replicated it. And so instead of spending thousands and thousands of dollars, I mean, Sativex is not available here in the U.S. for whatever reason is. Epidiolex is also very, very expensive, even with insurance. Because the DEA will not approve medicines that have more than one molecule. And it's, and it's, and it's. I mean, it's, to me, the arrogance, the arrogance to be sitting here and saying, we just need that one molecule, the 23 million years of evolution uh, that made this plant a thousand molecules is an accident. What, what clearly is the right thing to do is to take all those 999 and throw them away and just take this one. And let me just end on this one last point. So why are these people doing CBD isolate or THC isolate? I mean, why in the world would they think of doing that when it's cheaper to buy what they now call, I call it whole plant, they call it crude oil. So why, why are they taking what they call crude oil, which is really great whole plant oil, because the testing is so um, critical that it's almost impossible to grow cannabis that's at a safe enough level for pesticides. So this is called remediation. They have cannabis that is contaminated with, and I think the state's too picky on this one, but uh, regardless that those are the laws. So it tests um, positive for uh, pesticides. Your choice of two things. One, throw it away, which all of us had to do since new laws. Um, or two, remediate it, which means pull out just that one molecule, throw away the rest, and that one molecule will be clean. So it's much more expensive, but it's way, way lower value. So you're recommending whole plant? Whole plant. Your products, your cannabis products, 
if I'm gonna say one thing that's important today, it should smell like cannabis. That's how you know this whole plant left in it. I mean, okay. simple. Simple, simple. Well, Alan, as I know you, but Dr. Frankel, thank you. I wish you a lot of fun and luck tonight on your, your long distance date. And I think go, go, get, that, go get that can with the string. And uh, uh, I think you, you have to bring that. I know. I think we can use cans. I have old cans of food there. There you go. You know, open up your cans of chili and put them in a Tupperware and <laughs> you know, do it that way. So that would be very funny. Well, we'll I want to hear part two. We'll, we'll get you back on the show and we'll uh, talk about, like I said, autoimmune disease. I would like to talk about the difference between um, uh, hemp CBD versus cannabis CBD. I know there's a big controversy there. I'd like to talk about RSO oil versus full extract cannabis oil, as well as dosing and why, why less is more. And then talking about uh, some of the other uh, topics that you really hit up on Mystia Gravis is one, uh, but also talking about, you know, athletes and, and cannabis as well. So uh, Dr. Frank, lots to talk about. and uh, there's a lot to talk about. So we'll, we'll get you back on here and uh, have a great day. Everyone, this is John Malanka with the United Patients Group. Be informed and be well. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Hi, John Malanka here with the United Patients Group. I hope you've enjoyed our videos. Please click like, as well as subscribe to our channel here on YouTube. Also, follow us on Twitter at UPatientsGroup and on Facebook at United Patients Group, as well as for our podcasts. Please click the link in the description below. We'll see you there. Bye-bye.